Do you have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. Hi there, welcome. Uh, you've landed on it again. Ask a Lawyer here on CP24. So good to have you back for this week. My name's John Scholes. Joining us momentarily, Lior Sanfiru from ST Lawyers, stlawyers.ca if you want to reach out anytime. Or the phone number, how about that? 1 855 821 5900. Ask at employmentlawyer.ca is always the email address and the website. Really, the only website you need to know if you're looking to get smarter and learn and educate yourself about workplace rights and employment laws, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. I guarantee we'll be referencing that particular website several times throughout this half hour. So, uh, so tuck in, we've got lots to talk about, including our major topic, situations that trigger employment law disputes. Do not miss that. We'll get to a bunch of other content as well, Lior. But uh, we always start off with the, uh, the week that was, the case of the day. Pal, what is cooking on your end? Great to be here, John. Yep. And, you know, every time I do this show, I, I, I leave, and someone may stop me on the street and say, hey, we, I saw you on TV. I learned something from you. I, I understood that there's laws that protect me. I appreciate that. That's exactly why we're here every week, because I want to make sure that you know your rights, because you have rights. I don't make this stuff up. I tell you what the law does for you. We have extensive employment law rights. Some of the best laws in the world when it comes to employment law are right here in Ontario, so you need to know what those rights are. If your job that used to be great is not great anymore because something happened, maybe a, a different boss came in, changed things. Maybe that job that you had that you don't no longer have, you lost it. You were talking about severance and you want to know what your rights are, what you're owed. We'll talk about that if you're facing a workplace issue. We have a 30-minute show. We probably can't get to all of it. So beyond the 30 minutes of the show, very easy to get answers, very easy to get help. You can contact me by phone and email. You'll see that number and get that contact information throughout the show today. So don't hesitate. I'm not just some guy that shows up on TV. I do this in the real world. Make sure that you, uh, you get answers to all those questions. And let me start off today, as I always do, with the case of the day, some situation that came across my desk very, very recently. I spoke with a lady that had been on um, disability leave for about six months. She's suffering from a serious medical condition, but working on getting better. Well, she recently got an email from her employer telling her that we're going to need you to come back in the next couple of weeks. And if you do, no problem, your job is there. But if you're not going to be able to come back for the next in the next couple of weeks, we're not going to have your job for you. We're going to have to give the job to someone else, and you're going to be out of work. So she was very stressed about it. Not only is she sick and trying to get better, add the stress of losing her job. Thankfully, she did the right thing, and she called me. So here's how this works. First of all, you can be off as long as you need to with a doctor's note because of your medical condition. There's no time limit, whether it's a month, six months, two years. You can be off as long as you need to. There's no time limit. Your employer can't do anything. Now, your employer is required to assess whether they can bring you back at the time you're ready to come back. They can't assess if they have a job for you when you're not ready to come back to work. Maybe she doesn't come back to work for another year. So how can they know today that they won't have a job for her a year from now? By jumping the gun, by telling her that we just know, we're clairvoyant, we know we're not gonna have a job for you down the road, that's potentially a human rights violation. It's also a wrongful dismissal. It's illegal. So what happens if you're off on a disability leave? You do what you can to get better, you follow your doctor's advice, stay in touch with your employer, and let your employer know when you're ready to come back. At that point, and only at that point, are they going to be able to assess if they can bring you back? If they've tried and there's just nothing for you, then they can pay you your full severance. That can happen before then. If your employer does anything to you while you're off on disability, trying to get better, call me. When you do come back, Leo, when she's ready to come back, how does the, uh, the accommodation piece fit into that as well? Well, she may be able to come back to work, but maybe not necessarily the way she was before. She may need some support, some accommodation, modified duties, modified hours. In that situation, she needs a doctor's note specifying that. It's not enough for her to say, 
I need modified uh, duties, I need accommodation. A doctor needs to say that. But once a doctor says that, the company is under a very strict legal obligation to accommodate, to give her whatever the doctor says she needs. They can't question the doctor, they can't ask the doctor for specifics on the medical condition, they can't send her to another doctor. Uh, they have to do what the doctor says, and if they don't, again, that's a human rights violation, that's a very big deal. We, uh, you're invited, in fact, weekly to join Lior and I in the radio show, which we've been doing for some time. They'll catch that Sunday afternoons, 1 p.m. on our uh, News Talk 1010 station. Call into the show. It's an hour of radio. It's great stuff. You'll learn a lot. And you might get on air here in this particular show. Lior, we got our first phone call for the half hour coming up now. Let's have a, uh, let's have a quick listen. After 40 years of service, if the company decides to uh, close down, would I be entitled to any severance at all? I know I'm coming up to my age now, and I believe that the company might be shutting down. That's a good run. That's a great run. Well, the yeah. key here is to understand that just because a company is shutting down, mm -hmm. just because the company may be going out of business, does not relieve them of their obligation to pay you severance. And the same thing with age. You can work as long as you need to. There's no such thing as an age limit. Whether you're 67, like this gentleman, 77, or any other age, you cannot be considered to have resigned or retired because of your age. Now, because this person is losing their job, regardless of what the company's plans are about continuing to operate the business, they still have to pay him his full severance. And as you said, John, after 40 years, that's a lot of service and that's a lot of severance. So we're gonna go to our handy dandy tool, the severance calculator. You can find that, of course, at pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Let's take this uh, tool out for a spin right now. Let's see what that gives us when it comes to understanding how much severance he's owed. So this gentleman, 47, uh, 40 years of age, at the age of 67, we don't know yet what, what severance a company is offering him, but we can see that he's owed as much as 24 months. Now, it says 18 to 24. I think that's conservative. It's 24 months of, se of severance that he's owed. That's how much he's owed, regardless of what the company hopes to do. So by the way, that severance calculator we just used, completely free, completely anonymous, there for you. So check it out yourself. Let's get into a, a quick break, uh, Lior. Situations that trigger employment law disputes, that's on the other side of the break. So join us for that as we continue lots more here on Ask a Lawyer on CP24. You have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. Welcome back to Ask a Lawyer here on CP24. Thank you for sticking around through the break. And it's going to be talking about situations that, uh, that trigger employment law disputes. There can be many. First of all, I'll give you the contact information to reach out to Lior anytime. That phone number, 1-855-821-5900. Email right there, ask at employmentlawyer.ca. You can also scan that QR code anytime as well. Lior, let's get into these. Number one, is this? it's a big one. We talk about this all the time. When an employer lays off an employee temporarily, Right. So we're talking about disputes. We're talking about situations where, you know what, you have rights, so you're going to need some help. And, and probably yep. a, a big one that sometimes takes people by surprise is temporary layoffs. And that's because an employer actually doesn't have the, the right to put you on a temporary layoff. There's no automatic right for temporary layoff. If you're put on a temporary layoff, that's illegal. You can potentially treat that as a constructive dismissal. Now, the company is not looking at it as a termination. They're saying, we're just going to put you off work for a while. Our plan, our hope is to bring you back at some point. Well, the law says not so fast. The law says, no, you don't have a right. Just like you couldn't reduce someone's pay by 20, 30, 50 percent, well, you certainly can't reduce it by 100 percent, which is what a temporary layoff is. So oftentimes a dispute happens when a company is surprised to learn that they now have to pay severance, full severance, to someone that they never actually let go. Well, remember that. If you're put on a temporary layoff, you are the, in the driver's seat. You, the employee, you can decide to say, that's a termination. If that's what you want to do, call me. All right, another trigger for that employment law dispute is this, Lior, when an employer reacts or at least resorts to a termination for cause way too soon, or as you say, they pull the trigger too soon on it, right? Happens all the time, and that's because a termination for cause is reserved for the worst offenders. So you can only be terminated for cause if you did something so bad, so awful, that it's just not possible. It's not possible to continue employing you. 
too often, and as we've said, an employer pulls the trigger on a termination for cause, saying you deserve this capital punishment, even though the employee doesn't really deserve it. Whatever the employee did, it's just not bad enough to rise to that level. So a common employment law dispute, ha a dispute has to do with a termination for cause. If you've been let go for cause, unless you know you did something terrible, you're owed your severance. It means if you haven't received it, you've been wrongfully dismissed. But the good news is these issues are not difficult to resolve. You can get your full severance. That could be as much as 24 months pay. And of course, it starts by reaching out. Okay, we're working our way down the list. Number three is this, Lior, when an employer fires an employee after their long-term disability claim is cut off. So, and I'll give you an example. You're off on a disability leave, mm -hmm. you're receiving disability benefits. Now the insurance company says, for whatever reason, that could be illegal as well, we're gonna cut you off and, and we're not paying you. Employer hears that and says, aha, if your disability insurer cuts you off, means you should be coming back to work. So if you don't come back to work, we're gonna let you go, we're gonna consider you to have resigned. No, 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 not legal. When it comes to your ability to work, only your doctor's opinion is what matters. If you have a doctor's note saying you cannot work, your employer can't do anything to you, regardless of what the disability insurer says. If your disability insurer cuts you off before they should, before your doctor says that they sh should cut you off, call me. We have a whole team at the office dealing exclusively with this issue, dealing with the insurance company. And your employer cannot use that to hold it against you. Get that doctor's note. If your employer doesn't follow your doctor's note, doesn't believe your doctor's note, ignores that doctor's note, call me right away. All right, we already had one phone call come across the show. We love it from our radio show right here, News Talk 1010 in the GTA Sundays at 1 p.m. Please join us, call into the show. You may appear, well, your voice anyway, on this particular show. Lior, we'll get the phone call number two right now. I'm in management at my particular company, and when I took on that role, I was contract slid across the table. Within that contract, it basically said any of the things that constitute constructive dismissal, change of geographic location, scope yep. of the role, pay, hours, you name it. Um, if that happens, it does not constitute constructive dismissal. You know, I obviously signed that contract not wanting to rock the boat and get a black mm. eye on my career because they just go on to the next person. When and if, a, you know, a scenario like that occurs for me later on down the road, do I have any leg to stand on? That's a huge, huge problem. So you've heard me say on the show many times, maybe hundreds of times, that your employer doesn't have a right to make significant changes to the terms of employment. Your employer doesn't have a right to reduce your pay, to demote you, to change your shifts, et cetera. But guess what? They do have that right. They can do that if you sign an agreement giving them that power, giving them that right. So in most cases, no, you haven't signed an agreement. But if your employment agreement says, by the way, employee, yes, we're hiring you for this position, but we can change it. We can do whatever we want to your hours and pay. That gives your employer a huge amount of power, uh, you know, probably unreasonable power. But that's why you have to be very careful with that employment agreement. It's not just about salary and how much vacation you get. You want to make sure that that employment agreement doesn't give the company the ability to do whatever it wants to your job. Once you give them that power, you have no job security. Your employer can do whatever it wants. It eliminates this concept of constructive dismissal. So that employment agreement, I know you want to be the good soldier. I, I know you want to sign but please be, be smart about it. Let me see it. Let me tell you what it does and what it means before you sign it. We'll get into uh, one more quick break here and our third phone call will be on the other side. Then we'll get to Lior's weekly live stream for a question from that as well. And I'll tell you that after the break how you can join that every week. In the meantime, Ask a Lawyer continues here momentarily on CP24. Stick around. You have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. Welcome back. Ask a Lawyer here on CP24. Good to have you along for the half hour. I'm John Scholes and of course Lior Sanfiru here each week. He's a lawyer. He's got all the knowledge. You can always reach out. In fact, encouraged to do so uh, with your own questions beyond this half hour. 1-855-821-5900. Ask at employmentlawyer.ca. Scan the QR code there as well. Want to get to our third phone call? You can join us weekly there as well on the, uh, on the radio show. News Talk 1010 Sundays at 1 p.m. Simply call into the show when we give you the prompt and maybe your uh, voice will appear and your 
question on this show on the following week. Here we go. Phone call number three, Lior, is coming up right now. Let's have a listen. I have been employed with a very well-known chip company. I started as a summer student, and I've sort of just stayed on board. I never really signed a contract, but I've been with them for five years. And I'm now just coming to the conclusion that they're going to lay me off tomorrow. I'm a sales rep, so I go into the stores, and I fill their chips and sell them displays and stuff. And you get paid salary, commission, both? I get a base salary, and I get commission on top of it. I am 36. I like the no contract piece. I like that. That's it. We yep. were talking before yep. the break about contracts. So not having a contract is the best news for your severance because oftentimes what an employment agreement does or a contract of employment, it tries to limit your future severance. So in her case, we don't have to worry about that. So she gets her full severance as the law dictates. Now, she's a sales role. She has commissions. Her severance has to include her salary, her average commissions. We simply would look at what she earns on average and we uh, uh, continue that, calculate that, for the severance period. So the question, of course, becomes, we know she's going to lose her job, she believes, very quickly. How much severance? How many months' pay is she owed? We're going to go back to our severance calculator tool. Find it, of course, at pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, free and anonymous. But let's see for her what severance looks like. We know she's in a sales role. She's been there for five years. No employment agreement, thankfully. She's 36 years of age. We don't know yet what severance she's offered, but we know what she's owed, which is six to eight months. You see that in the yellow line there, six to eight months of severance. That's how much she's owed. That's how easy it is to find out for yourself. So if you're let go, you want to go to the severance calculator at pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. So that way you're not taken by surprise. You're not going to sign off on inadequate severance because you'll know better. Look, in addition to our radio shows weekly, uh, you know, TV show here, of course, and everything else Lior does, does a live stream on YouTube and Facebook weekly. You can join that. Ask your questions at stlawyers.ca to do so. And for this week, Lior, it's uh, short but sweet, says, my husband and I disagree on who should go for help with a severance package. Both he and his boss say the Ministry of Labor should handle it. But uh, I've heard you say otherwise. Well, uh, you know, too bad we don't have a lot of time on the show because I'd like to talk for probably the next half hour on this topic. So let's be very clear. The government, the Ministry of Labor cannot, cannot help you when it comes to your severance, when it comes to losing your job and getting your full entitlements. The Ministry of Labor can only help you enforce your minimum entitlements. That's a small portion of what you're actually owed. Okay, so they may tell you, oh, you've been there for three years, three weeks of severance is all you're owed, when in fact the real answer could be six months, eight months, even 12 months. Ministry of Labor can only enforce your minimum entitlements. If you want to know how much you're actually owed, your full entitlements, and to enforce those, you have to talk to me, or certainly if you don't like me, talk to another employment lawyer. But no, it's wrong. The Ministry of Labor cannot help you enforce your full severance entitlements. Fantastic question from our live stream. Thank you so much if you submitted that. I want to get to an email, but we got to take a short break before we get into that part of the show. But that is coming up, so stick around right here. Ask a Lawyer on CP24. You have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. Welcome back to Ask a Lawyer. This is CP24. A few minutes to go. I'll tell you how to reach out to Lior on the other side of the half hour. Anytime, actually, to have that conversation on your own does not cost you a penny to pick up a phone and ask some questions. 1-855-821-5900. Email ask at employmentlawyer.ca. And, of course, that QR code is always there for a moment to scan and get more information. Okay, here we go. Question. This one, uh, Lior, from an email, said, I love this question, says, I was fired from a highly specialized role after only one year and given a two-week severance package. We'll talk about that part. But because I missed the very tight signing deadline, the company is refusing to give me anything. Do I have options? Well, clearly this is an employer that doesn't watch our show. You got because it. if they watched our show, they would know better. So let's break this down. 
Remember, the amount of severance that you're owed is not up to the company. It's not something that the company decides. The law decides how much severance you're owed. Now, if the company decided, if it was up to them, they can impose a deadline, they could do whatever they want. But because it has nothing to do with the company, because the law makes that determination, that deadline is irrelevant. The company doesn't get to decide when they'll pay, if they will pay, what needs to happen before they pay. The law says, too bad, you have to pay. That's why that severance deadline is irrelevant, not just in this case, but in every case. Every severance offer you'll ever see has a deadline. You have to sign this by Friday or else. Well, guess what? It's a pressure tactic. That's all it is. Your legal rights do not expire on that deadline. In fact, they don't expire for a whole two years. So don't ever fall for that pressure tactic. And your employer actually may believe that they're legally allowed to say, if you didn't sign, we're not going to pay you. No, they can't. The law makes that determination. Now, probably the best thing that happened here is that this person didn't sign off on that offer because she's owed a lot more than two weeks' pay. Now, I don't know all the details, but could, it could easily be four, five, even six months' pay, not weeks' months. So she actually dodged the bullet. That employer should have absolutely accepted that release, that severance document, so that they only have to pay two weeks. Bottom line is, don't ever do this. Don't worry about a deadline, and certainly don't sign off on that severance offer without speaking to me first. You know, you mentioned that deadline. We've talked for years how it's simply a pressure tactic. It doesn't, it doesn't have any teeth. How effective is it, though? How many people call you after the fact saying, oh, I should have called you last week because I just signed off on it? And according to your calculator, I didn't get much. It is incredibly yeah. effective, and that's why employers have used it for decades and now think they'll continue using it because of the fact that if you're an employee and you just lost your job and your employer, this big company is telling you, you better sign this by Friday, you're going to feel that pressure to sign. Well, I'm here to tell you, don't do it because the law is there for you. The law decides, and your employer doesn't get a say. It's an effective tactic. I think that since you and I, John, have been doing this show, it's, it's been better, uh, but still effective. And that is all the uh, time we, uh, we have this week to answer all your questions. Reach out now that we are done to Lior anytime. We'll give you the phone number first, 1-855-821-5900. That email address is ask at employmentlawyer.ca, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. is that golden website that's free and anonymous with the severance calculator. And our radio show, Anytime as well, News Talk 1010, Sundays at 1. You can search for that and any other questions, cp24.com slash askalawyer. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you next week right here on the show.